Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben, I'm the Controversial Cyclist and I'm a massive sea nut, but it takes sea nut to know a fucking sea nut and what I do on my channel is out cycling boob tube sea nuts that are completely scamming you and ripping you fucking off. So whilst they're shilling you and scamming you products because they're paid to say something like a paid advertisement, which they never ever run as a disclaimer, may I add, they are getting you to buy the complete crap that first of all, they've never swung a leg over or tested any equipment or bothered to fucking actually even look at in some cases. So who are we covering today? Well, actually disclaimer time before I go into this, I have Tourette's, my language will get salty. If you don't like salty language and sweary language, you know where the fucking door is, get out now. If you love Cam Nichols and you're one of his little followers and it's gonna hurt you, you best get the fuck out now because this will hurt your little feelings. If you're neither of those, get your headset on and let's shaft this fucking rancid ginger hat wearing freak for his scam ways. And it is scamming. He is scamming you. He is one of the fucking worst. I think he takes the title from Dave Arthur. Um, in fact, he is. He's number one wretch boy, number one boob tube scammers in the cycling industry, without shadow of a doubt. This guy will shill his grandmother and fucking toss everyone out in the process. Let's look at this. Let's look at his history and let's try and wrap this video up as quickly as possible because like I tell you, no expense was spent making these videos and I watch this shit so you don't fucking have to. And I drip, dissect this shit so you don't have to lose your fucking money on their complete bollocks. Right, without further ado, let's look at Scam Nichols and the drama that he's managed to cause almost over every single Chinese bike build that he gets because it always goes wrong because there's always some quality control issues even though he loves Chinese bikes and Chinese cycling and the Chinese cycling industry. Let's watch what he's going to say about the Yolio. Before we discuss the issue that is causing us to send, a frame we've recently unboxed on this channel, the Your Elio R12 Aero frame back to where it came Speed from. I want to preface this video by saying I honestly do not yeah, like making fine. videos like this. This is the third time this has happened to me in my YouTube history, first with the Vortex No Comp. Well, stop fucking making the videos like this then and talk to the distributors or send a fucking email before you make a video, you stupid fucking clown. Wheels, then with the elf, and now this. And Neil, who's now part Look of the bike project on this channel, is finding out he does Look at that fucking gorilla smashing. No wonder the fucking builds are not good. The people that you're employing to build or paying to build or your mates that you're getting to build the frames up look completely unprofessional. And that level of unprofessionalism means, looks like they're not even fucking qualified to do it. So what the fuck? It's ridiculous. I don't like doing this either. Why? Well, we build on the other side of the fence relationships with these brands or in this case, local distributors, as was the case with the Elves project and this project and another one we have lined up shortly. As a result, these small businesses entrust in the content, in our process, and as a small business operator myself, I enjoy helping other small business operators promote their products. However, our number one priority, which is above the brands and distributors, is to be fully transparent with you because- Bullshit. You're not fully transparent with anyone because again, I started because I knew you weren't transparent within the TriFox fucking poll that you did. When you asked your audience again, get them involved, make them feel like they're part of a channel that's worth something, you know, get them looking out of your fucking ginger hoop because you keep saying the word transparent and they're too fucking stupid to know that that's a mental thing, isn't it? Where you keep saying the same word over and over and then the, you say it more and more and someone else believes that you are that. Fucking bollocks. We've all know that fucking deal scam the cam nickels or cam the scam nickels you're a fucking moron and anyone that is following you and licking out of your ginger hoop is an absolute brain dead fucking moron so that's it if you're a small business owner first thing and you cared about small business you know how it fucking feels to be a small business owner you know how hard it is and how much they have to try next to big business brands to even make a fucking dent and to even make themselves sustainable so they can stay around in business. It's fucking cutthroat. So you would know that the first thing you do is pick up the phone and just have a go, you know, get onto the guy from Elves. So you saw him there in the video, the Elves distributor, just get on there and actually fucking talk to him. Humans are brilliant for that. 
Talk to them, okay? That's all you got to do, talk to them, Cam. But what do you do? Oh no, you go out there, you script a fucking video, you take days to fucking shoot it, it and you haven't even made one phone call for someone to, to sort out the problem. Not only this, this elves fucking guy was in, he's the, they, there's proper distribution in Australia. I can't believe this, and I can't believe this is the way that this has gone. But that's how much of a fucking ginger bullshitter he is. I'm sorry if you're ginger. I've got no other thing to say about him because he's fucking grinding my gears that much. You know, so nothing against people that are strawberry blonde or ginger here at all. I'm just saying him as an individual is fucking woeful, man. It's absolutely woeful. From what I understand, a lot of you form buying decisions based off of content that you watch on this channel. And as a result of that, I think it's only fair and reasonable. You shouldn't do. Not ideal for the brand and the local distributor that we share with you what has happened with this frame right here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come back here and I'm going to explain where to from here. Yeah, we run into a little snag with this one, mate. Putting it all together, everything looked really snug. And then I had a quick look at the uh, rear axle dropout through axle holes. And we've noticed a bit of an inconsistency in the non-drive side. Right, uh, just for fucking clarity, this is not a mechanic, by the way. This is uh, a bike fitting guy that he used to do, does his bike fitting. So whether he's not, he, he can build a bike or whatever it is, whether he's got qualifications to or not, I don't know. And I don't fucking care. But at no point has he ever built a bike on the channel. He leaves that to other gorillas. This time they go to a different fucking guy. It sounds like, you know, wants a bit of self-promotion. But actually the guy sounds quite knowledgeable and sound... Um, and doesn't seem like a complete fucking gorilla because the gorillas for the X, X, uh, X10, as I say Xbox then, Trifox X10 and Elvis builds were outed. Like basically the, the fucking viewers, you know, people just like, who the fuck are you employing to, to do these builds? This is where a lot of your fucking problems come from is mishandling of the build, um, which is just schoolboy, isn't it? Schoolboy errors. Why the fuck... It doesn't, it, like, this is ridiculous. Why, why has it got 180,000 subscribers? How the fuck can he keep scamming people? How stupid are fucking people? I brought it down to Aaron today to have a look at it, and he's going to give us his impression of it. Paintwork and the rest of the finish looks brilliant, though, so I'm super stoked about that. But uh, this could be a bit of a problem. Uh, we have a poorly made hole that Neil has yeah. noticed. Main issue is going to be brake rub, I would say. Okay. So under load, because Neil puts out tremendous amounts of watts. Um, <laughs> When we, uh, when he's pedaling, we look. It's 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 held in place, but we have in this hole. It's not even a proper hole, right? Look at it. It's been hit with like a Dremel or something. It looks pretty bad. Most of the time, the holes like this are produced very very well. Um, that is pro that's got to be one of the worst we've seen. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen one like that in a while. Can you even get it on camera properly? I put it just uh, fit it back from the front. It is terrible. Like fair play. Like you know, you can see that. We are looking at a twelve millimeter hole. Actually, a whole millimeter plus out. So it's measuring thirteen. Yeah, thirteen plus mil. The way in which that would affect the bicycle when he's pedaling it is, and it wouldn't be back and forth because it's being held in place. You'd find that as you pedal over time. It would most probably squirm the wheel, right? Because it's held in place. It, it just right. So all of this stuff, I completely agree with, and I think the mechanic is actually bang on there, and he's fucking crap. But there's a distribution process in Australia. How far away? If he's very close to him, I'm pretty sure the distributor would probably run the fucking frame over to him. Australia is one big, big ass fucking country though. So if he's you know over the other side of Australia, all he's got to do is say, look, can you just box that one up? I'm going to send you another one out. No problem. Job done. We'll have a look at it. Thank you for highlighting that. And we'll put that back, you know, up to, to Yolio. That's decent fucking distribution. That's a decent company. And, and the distributor's not even given that chance. Now, if you go through online and look at what Cannondale are saying and denying, if you look at what Canyon are saying and denying. If you look at what all these other brands will deny and lie about, mainstream cycling brands that will deny about all of this stuff that's going on, you will find the same things happen over and over again in that sphere. BMC, same one. Does he ever talk about them? No, he doesn't. Like, this is deliberate, and this is a deliberate onslaught to actually smash the Chinese cycling industry, my belief and my opinion, apart because they are a massive threat and they've been proven to be a massive threat to the mainstream cycling brands. Okay, so that's a video for five weeks that we just covered and he slates off the Yogi Leo and it's all fucking terrible and everything's all wrong. And then he goes back and he asks his audience, uh, you know, what would you want us to do with this? Do you want us to carry on with this build? Well, like he asked the his audience about the Trifox and Cam, the audience spoke and Cam didn't listen to his audience and he fucked them off because he had some other payday or something else to do or whatever it was. 
again, but apparently this time he's listened to his audience. So it's in his interest. Now, if you watch the way that this goes, and this is about five weeks later, they get another frame and listen to the scripting of this. This is fucking ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Because, spoiler alert, it sounds like that Yolio have gone, oh, we'll pay you a bit of fucking cash if you say all of this about our bike. Because it runs into like an advertisement. They start going onto, the, onto their website, showing you all those custom paint jobs you can get, special paint, how much it costs, rada, 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 rada. It turns into a fucking paid sponsored advert for Yolio. Now, he didn't do that for elves. Why? Most probably because he wasn't being paid. He definitely didn't do it for fucking Trifox because they don't fucking pay. The most Cam Nichols was going to get out of Trifox was a free frame and a fucking 10% fucking coupon code that he could stick on his website and he probably got three or four or five or six percent of that. So this is the reality. Guys, listen to this. It's fucking easy to see. Cam Nichols is a pathological fucking liar. After it came with a through axle hole. Yes. Issue. Oh, through axle hole issue. Yeah. So we've we've gone ahead with the project because we, we ran a, a poll on the YouTube uh, video last time and 53% of people speed were up even continuing more. the project. So we have. Okay. We've, we've built it up. We've got it ready and we've both ridden it for about a, I, I had three weeks on it. You had probably four or five. Yes. Um, I hold it. Even longer, I reckon. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I wanted it back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we've, we've both had a good ride on it now, and I think we're both well versed to give our impressions of it now. Uh, the other thing I wanted to preface this video with is a lot of channel supporters will be used to the fact that we normally take a frame in when it's given to the channel, starting with a frame to a carbon expert, being Gary from Carbon Steed, and they will be used to this given the fact that we've been doing it on the channel since we started with the Windspace project in 2020. So Neil, have you been wondering where the scan is? Absolutely, mate. Okay. I love the scan. Okay. I'm, I'm a tech geek, so okay. yeah. <laughs> so, so the criticism that these frames are hand-picked because they're sent to the channel was growing, and rightfully so. So in order to mitigate this, the Falleth Evo, I bought one of their frames anonymously and took that in to see Gary. Right, Gary and the, uh, the frame scan was the best part of it. That's got the most views. Just go on his videos. Don't listen to my fucking words. Gary's got like any video with Gary in it, one of the, I think the maximum views is by far five times bigger than any video that Cam's done without Gary in it. And he's about over half a million views on it. So obviously people are very interested in what Gary does for the transparency, for the information that he can give. Also, Gary seems like a fucking good egg because Gary never fucking came in and just slated stuff for slated sake. And he didn't have to slate these brands next to someone else to make the big legacy brands win. And he wasn't pro Chinese other. Uh, either he would actually just create what was there or see what was in front of him and he would he would actually form an impression through what he was seeing so it wasn't it didn't seem biased anyway so it, it seemed actually for the fucking to use the word that cam Nichols is always fucking loving to use is transparent now he's got rid of the only transparent process and now you just got to listen to the ginger fucking winger cam Nichols roll shit out of his fucking mouth to shell you anything. And this is a paid promotion, in my opinion. For inspection. And reflecting on that process, I feel like there's not much to like that came out of that last video. It was messy, wasn't it? It was messy. The yes. audience feedback wasn't that positive. Mm. The emails and messages that I got from channel supporters wasn't that positive. So I think the audience, you're right, it was messy. The relationship with the old distributor, burn a bridge there with a really good guy. Mm. And additionally, from my point of view, editing and making that video, I just found it a bit icky. I didn't enjoy it. So I feel like with the whole scam. Well, he didn't need to burn the bridge with the elves distributor. Fucking decent guy. They would have worked it out. I'm a hundred percent sure that he would have worked it out. Give the guy a chance. But Cam Nichols didn't because he obviously had this loaded from the beginning and washed out Trifox, washed out Elves, and probably pressured Yolio into saying, "Look, you know, we you're gonna have to give us some money to get out of this one, Yolio. You know, you are." But anyway, let's get into the part where it's actually very fucking evident that this is a paid promotion. Into the frame is fantastic. I deal with seat posts all the time that are slipping and moving and D-shaped posts which have a habit of sitting off square and that sort of stuff and being loose in the frame. This one is almost like a vacuum fit. It is so tight. It's perfect. One little quirk we had was a bit of strange positioning of this, the seat post wedge clamp. There's a bit of grip material that's, that's put on the front of the seat post to help it, to help it grab and it's too low down on the seat post for our frame. So um, that should be a little bit higher up so that it's actually gripping. Even with uh, my fairly high seat height up around 755 millimeters on a 54 centimeter frame, the wedge clamp is not actually sitting on that grip material. So that stuff probably needs to be further up along the seat post. But that was like the only criticism we had. The rest of the build was, was very easy. Uh, the second thing I wanted to talk about, Neil, is the design. There's three things I want to talk about here. First one is paint. So they offer four standard options, which is a lot of options compared to some other bike manufacturers. And they also offer custom, which is what we've done, yep. which is 500 Australian dollars, which seems pretty reasonable to me. Mm. Especially with the quality of the custom job. It is, it is really nice. It is nice. Yeah. Yeah. It nice. Yeah. Which does... 
that's a paid promotion is just going onto the website and especially when you start talking about custom how much the paint job is you know da, 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 da. it's a fucking paid promotion so they've gone from absolutely slating yo-yo saying it's absolute fucking piece of garbage and you know they don't like doing this and they've got to come and tell the thing and before they tell the distributor they're going to tell their audience and rada 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 and then this is all just changed on a sixpence and now they're back to this and it's the best thing ever and it's the best fucking frame ever and you know it's quite evident that yo-yo has in my opinion evidence in my opinion or evident in my opinion that they the earlier fucking paid them you know have either upped the amount of money they're paying them or have you know they've gone on there and they've squeezed yo-yo a bit or there's they've come to some sort of an agreement but that is a gentleman's agreement that's not a transparency agreement at all like elvez whether the you know i don't particularly like elvez i don't think i think it's a bit fucking meh i think the the marketing's a bit meh and you know i don't think they should have gone up to against other chinese frames i think they should have pitched themselves against the main brands that's where chinese makers i think chinese makers need to unite and actually pitch themselves against specialized and go fuck it we're coming for your jugular you know you know look you don't fight each other in the chinese fucking market Chinese brands need to get together and fight the fucking big gatekeepers, you know, the oligarchs of the cycling industry, because I think the quality is getting there. But the price is a fraction, a fraction of the price that you're paying with all the price increases and all the hypes and you having to pay for the UCI fucking teams and all this bollocks and all the marketing um, and all the blurb. Now, let's look at how they wrap this up everything the wheelbase the, the head angles the fork rake it's it's all pretty stable i threw it down some pretty good descents uh with a fair bit of braking and hairpins and rough road and i found it really stable plenty of grip from the tubeless tires it does have a longer wheelbase actually you talk about normal geometry but compared to like a cannondale system six or like even um a secret exceed mm. it's, it's probably 10 mil longer in the wheelbase i think this one was about uh was it 980 or so yeah it, it was v potentially on the long end of normal yeah. but certainly not very long yeah. it certainly wasn't a thousand mil or anything like that but i found it great i found it really planted and stable um in terms of cornering stability holds its speed holds its, holds its speed yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i had no gripes i thought it was really i think planted and stable exactly. probably the best things i've got to call it um and i'd probably give it a four and a half yep. for, for hand I agree with everything you said. I'm going to give it a four and a half as well. Mm. Practicality. So practicality is like the practicality of being able to do things on the frame easily, ignoring the fact slowest thing in the world. Yep. Um, but a really good all rounder. I would agree, uh, and perhaps not suitable for stumpy, um, <laughs> heavy impingement, heavy uh, beef cakes, beefcakes <laughs> on on harsh roads. So if you've got value from this video, if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a like. Off the channel out. So there you go, guys. Another scam Nichols production where he has managed to get as much money as possible out of that and exposure and drama. And this time he's decided not to completely throw Yolio under the bus uh, because most probably they bent to his demands and paid him more money. Much like Elvez probably told him to go and fuck himself and the distribution and he's burnt all his bridges with what seemed like a very reasonable a really reasonable man and a, a very decent process that was being set up for the distribution of elves even if i don't particularly like elves bikes as in a personal visual preference i still think what elves were doing was was very noble um what i didn't quite like is that i thought at one point elves was paying and i still do think uh youtubers to get out there and obviously influencing with more money coming across the table um, to shit on other Chinese brands, which I think is not fair, you know, in the case of Winspass Trifox, I think they shouldn't do that. Um, but hey ho, what he was met with was, I thought, very, very good service. Now, what he's been met with it, with Yolio, we don't really know. They haven't scanned the frame to see how decent the frame was from an engineering perspective. And from the start of this, it's already failed from an engineering perspective for being so bad. And that's what he highlighted and he made all that drama about. That's all seemed to be just washed away. So scam the Cam Nichols can scam the shit out of this and he can obviously take his payday and then fuck off. You know, this, I believe, needs to be outed and needs to be stopped. It's fucking useless. It's useless content. If you're the buying public, it could end up getting fucking stupid to the point of it being actually dangerous in the end. I think the best thing was actually getting these guys that are honest and transparent, which uh, his mate who was doing the scanning or the guys that were doing the scanning for him seemed really, really good. They seemed like a great team. They would like take the paint back, you know, and, and they were pretty consistent. They, they, they would never slate anything for Slayton's sake. Um, and you never found that they were biased towards any brand. They would just deal with the bikes that were in front of them at the time, which actually I thought was absolutely key for the consumer. 
to take their information and actually trust what they're saying was actually good. And at the end of the day, this is a lot about trust, isn't it? Now you haven't even got that. So what have you got with Scam the Cam Nichols and on his channel? Well, you've got his paid goons or his mates that are absolutely the worst bike builders on in the fucking history of bicycling or man. They're just a load of fucking apes. Just take them down. You might as well just throw a carbon frame into the fucking local chimp fucking compound at your local zoo and see what they do with it i mean just drive just drive around a fucking safari park and look at how the chimps t or the apes or the fucking not the apes the actual um, monkeys take apart your car and it was pretty much like watching that but trying to put a bike together with these absolute fucking buffoons that are cam nichols's friends um now, the guy that sits opposite him, that he calls the bean pole to him being the beefcake, which is just fucking ridiculous and a bit weird in every sense of the case. Um, he's not a fucking bicycle mechanic. And if he is, he's a silent one. He doesn't do the bike builds. He does the bike fitting. So for him to come back and to really assess how the build went is complete horseshit. Uh, okay, he might have watched the build, he might take that information from someone else, but why didn't they go down and put the video in there for the level of transparency that comes out of Cam Nichols' mouth? You know, he's all about the transparency. Well, that's not very transparent, is it? They've got rid of the frame scan, so that's not very transparent, is it? And what it does look like for transparency is that you made an advert for the Yoleo R12 there, and you were paid to do it. That's it, Cam. So, you've been shafted yet again. I will stop making these videos when these fucking clowns stop talking shit. That means I'm redundant. I'm happy to stop doing this because I'm not fucking going to get any money out of this. This was never my intention. I just got pissed off to listening to absolute bullshit from people that are scamming you. So Cam the Scam Nichols, you have been shafted again and you will continually get shafted by me until you fucking change your ways. Don't just change your play on words like you keep doing. Change your fucking ways, mate. Bring back the fucking scan so we know that you're not scamming us. The scan to stop you scamming us, okay? So bring back the only guy that was transparent, using your words now, Cam the Scam Nichols. And get rid of your fucking goons or your lackeys that are monkeying these bikes together. And you might get a better built bike with less problems, okay? But no one should be buying a bike or taking recommendations from this absolute fucking ginger clown with the information that he provides here. Because there's no information. None. Any of these Chinese coverage, I would say, is at best fucking you know, misinforming at best. He's misinforming you because, again, he's sponsored by BMC, constantly talking about Trek, constantly talking about Specialized, constantly shilling the mainstream bicycle brands that he says he doesn't pay, get paid to do. Well, they don't provide him with the clicks and the views. And we know he's all about the coin and that's all about money in his pocket because he's always saying, well, you know, I don't get paid that much. So why would you keep promoting brands that don't get views? If you have a look when he does a thing on BMC, no one's fucking interested. It's like 18,000 views. No one fucking is interested. When he does it on Trifox, over 100,000 views. When he does it on Elvis, over 100,000 views. That's where his money is, in the clicks, in the advertising revenue for that. Something, not something, nothing matches here. So I've given you this evidence. I've given this information. Go and find the rest out for your fucking self. It's not that hard and it's not that hard to see. Guys, thanks for getting to the end of this one. Thanks for the support. Please keep bringing it. Get into the comment section. Blow this up. Like, dislike, disagree, whatever it is. I do not delete comments. We could go toe to toe if we need to. If comments do de get deleted, it's not me. It is somebody else coming in and deleting the comments or it's YouTube for whatever someone said. Thank you for the support. Thank you for letting me be here. And thank you for lending me your ear. Peace out.